Hello, my friends. Um, this is a tutorial on how to set up your Aries gradebook for proficiency based grading, if that is a thing that you're trying to do. So hopefully I'll be able to run you through how to um, set up your preferences for the gradebook and make it work for proficiency based grading. So um, the first thing is if you are in Aries, you're going to go to gradebook and click there. And then you're going to choose whichever class you are um, shifting to. Um, obviously, you would set up a new grade book for the spring class, but I'm going to assume you've already done that. Um, so I would set up my new grade book there. And then um, while this hopefully loads and doesn't show all the kids, oh, there you go. Um, I'm going to go into manage, edit grade book, and then we'll go from there. So under edit grade book, it's already been set up. It was set up for the fall, but you would want to choose it for the spring, um, et cetera, et cetera. Under options, this is the one that actually makes the difference. So first you're going to click the first box for use a rubric grading scale to compute total grade. You're also going to click the second box for weight scores of assignments by category. Um, I choose not to apply assignment scores immediately, but you could choose to click that box if you prefer. Um, either way is fine. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, and then you're also going to click the box, the fifth one down for apply weighting to formative and summative assessments. I chose to go with 5% formative, 95% summative. You could probably even go 1% formative, 99% summative. But what this summative thing is doing is it's going to mean that your final score that you put in at the end of the semester for each uh, standard, each essential standard and each proficiency scale is going to vastly outweigh all of the formative pieces that gave you that data. Um, so I like a 595, um, but that one has to be clicked so that it can do the, the total thing. Um, the only other one that I have marked is display the final mark to me and the parents and students, uh, and then you're good. Okay, under categories, categories is where you put in all of the essential standards and all of the proficiency scales that you are going to be assessing on. Um, I chose to do eight different sets. Um, so mine are, uh, first you click the box for doing weighted scoring. Um, and then the eight that I choose to uh, evaluate in are conscientious learning. So that's like the work that they're doing in class. Um, are they being a diligent student, completing homework, completing classwork, et cetera, et cetera, keeping up a notebook, journaling, whatever. Um, that's 15%. Communication, which is both written and uh, oral presentation or video production is 15%. Collaboration, how they work with other students is 10%. And then I have five content pieces for each semester. In the fall semester, we do engineering design cycle for 14%, data analysis for 8%, momentum for 12%, forces for 12%, and energy for 14%. All of that adds up to 100%. If you want to make things easier and just make them worth all the same, if you had, say, five essential standards for a semester, you could make each essential standard worth 20%, and that would be an easy set. If one essential standard is worth way more to you than some of the rest, obviously, you know how to skew that to make that work. Um, so those are my eight. In the uh, spring, I'm going to have the first five be the same, and then our last three would shift to content waves, content electricity, and content gravity and orbits. And this is for physics. Um, so those are just like the core standards, the essential standards that we evaluate on in physics. Um, okay. I like to also shift it so that they're color coded um, so that it's really easy once we look at the scores to see what's up. Um, under assignments, there is nothing you need to do yet. Um, obviously manage your students, put them in. Uh, final marks. This one is a big one. So for final marks, because we're going on a one through four rubric scale, you're going to want to record an A plus as 3.75 up to four. I chose to put it into five just in case. Um, a is 3.25 to 3.74. A minus three to 3.24. B plus 285 to 299. B 265 to 284. B minus 250 to 264. C plus 235 to 249. C 215 to 234. C minus two to 214, D plus 175 to 1.99, D 125 to 174, D minus one to 124, and F zero to 0.99. Um, that'll do you. That's the standard um, Marzano scale. And um, that way your one through fours will convert to um, ABC. 
Uh, and that's about it. Um, so the next thing for assignments is you'll notice that I only put in one assignment for summative for each of my standards. So I put those in as the very first thing that I do. Um, my first assignments were communication, final score, and I marked that as summative. Collaboration, final score, marked as summative, and it's due on the last day of the semester. So for this uh, last semester, that was December 17th. Um, but I put those first eight assignments in as the very first eight assignments um, with the due date of the last day of the semester. Then every other assignment that I put in is formative. Um, so like these were a variety of different project scores and final exam scores and work that we did in class. Um, and all of these, this F column going straight down here, um, I have it tagged to my different um, different categories, but the F indicates that it's formative. What that means is that during the progress reports, it'll do an average of those formative scores and it'll multiply those formative scores in together and give like, here's your average of where you are right now. And then at the semester, I put in my final summative scores after looking at the general trends. Um, and that pushes everything into that summative score and outweighs all the formative stuff. So the progress reports are still valid, um, but at the end, the summative will kind of outweigh everything because I set that at 95%. Um, so if we look at uh, scores by class, here's a sample class and a few things to note. Um, the first one is, I just wanna note that uh, for, I'm gonna try and take away the names there. Um, so the first thing that I want to note is these are all of my final scores. Um, but more importantly than that is down here. There you go. So for every assignment, um, actually not for every assignment, for, for many assignments, there might be different standards that you're evaluating in. For example, on my final exam, I evaluated in their data and graphical analysis. I evaluated in momentum and I evaluated in forces. Those were three separate sections on the same final exam. Um, and different students did differently on those different sections. So like this student, for example, went three, two and a half, two. This student was very consistent, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half on all three sections. Um, but that's not always the case. Sometimes students will do better or worse on certain sections. Um, it's not always the same pattern, but it gives you a pretty good gauge of like, how are they doing in these different areas? Um, then the next one is our final project was our alternative energy vehicle project. And under this alternative energy vehicle project, I assessed them in co um, conscientious learner. So how did they do in terms of process on that project? Um, communication, how was their presentation document and their presentation? alternative energy vehicle uh, on the engineering design cycle. So this was like, how did they actually design the car and how was that put together? And then finally, um, their energy understanding. So were they able to transfer the energy and explain where all the energy went at different time periods? Um, and you can see we did pretty well with the energy, pretty well with the engineering design cycle. Um, and actually it was a pretty successful project all around. A lot of kids went above and beyond. So I was very happy. Um, Great, so different assignments, I might be putting in multiple scores for that one assignment. Um, but even with all those things that I added, I only got up to 41 total assignments, including uh, numbers one through eight, which were my first final exam, final uh, scores. So uh, it's pretty reasonable, minus those eight ones at the end. Uh, that's 33 total scores um that i put in over the course of the semester and then eight that i put in at the very end in order to put those eight in at the very end you can go up to the top and click show filters um, when you click show filters it'll give you the categories um, and because you've set your grade book by categories you can go through and look at how we did in different areas so for example if i click on communication um, and apply filters it'll now give me only the communication scores across the whole semester. So at the very end, um, what I'm able to do is go in here, scroll down, and I'm gonna try to make it slightly less big. Okay, that seems about right. 
Um, so now I can go through and look, boy, these guys did really well with communication. Let's see if I can scroll down and find a set that was not quite as successful. This was a strong class. Um, okay, so here's a set that um, was slightly less successful in their communication, a little bit more representative. So um, what I'm looking at here is the first assignments up until this very last column is all of the times that they demonstrated their communication across the course of the semester. Um, so in this case, this student did pretty nice writing in a clear paragraph, um, 3.5 at the very beginning of the year. Their Rube Goldberg project, they did an oral presentation that was a 3.5. Their website update was written, that was a three. Their physics of sports, how they communicated that through video was a four. Their trebuchet writing about a catapult they built, um, that's a document, was four. Um, their website update was a three and a half. Their website update was a three. And their alternative energy vehicle presentation was a four. So I ended up giving them a four overall on this one, even though it's a mix of threes, threes and a halves, and fours. Um, their physics of sports was so strong. I remember this one specifically uh, that it kind of outweighed and it showed me they really can go above and beyond in their communication. Their writing had a three and a half in there, a couple three and a halves, and their uh, oral presentations had numerous fours. So I'd say they are consistently going above and beyond, um, and that gives them a four. This next student uh, had three, three and a half is an oral presentation, a website updated a one and a half, um, although that could just be not trying very hard. Um, video at a three, two and a half, two, two and a half, four. So their oral presentations were at like a three and a half on average. I have a four here, a three and a three and a half. Their written work was more at like a two and a half uh, or a two. So because I have that difference between their written work and their oral work, I ended up giving them a three. Um, I probably could have gone to a two and a half on that one, but um, gave them the benefit of the doubt and gave that three. This next student, their oral presentations have a three and a half, a three, and a three and a half, but their written work was not nearly as strong. Their written work was a two, one and a half, and a missing assignment. Um, that missing assignment indicates that they didn't do any communication there, and so that bumped them to a two and a half. Same deal for this next student down, um, strong oral presentation work. Uh, their speaking was really good, three and a half, four, three and a half but really weak writing, one missing, two, two and a half. Um, so not great writing there. That made me err on the side of the two and a half. And then this final student, three and a half, three, three and a half, four, three, three and a half, four. They have some fours in there. Those are good uh, scores. They have some three and a halves and they have a couple threes. Um, those fours didn't stand out to me as like, oh, that was one of the students that was really above and beyond. And so they earned a three and a half. So you can see it kind of, uh, varies depending on how I look at their work and what really stands out. Um, it's not an average, it's looking at a trend over time. And I tried to focus on like which ones were written, which ones were spoken, and then um, are they showing their ability to communicate in one form or the other. Um, and so I would go through and at the end of the semester, I would fill in this last column and that last column then becomes their primary score. Um, so if I go all the way down and check a sample student, what this ends up looking like to a sample student is if I go to show more and go just by, uh, there you go, just by category, um, what students can see is they can see what their average score was in the formative work what their summative scores were in each category. And so they almost have like a full report card from each class. So this student could see that they did an okay job, like they were right on grade level standard for conscientious learning. They weren't really going above and beyond, but they were doing everything that they were asked to do, taking the notes, doing the assignments, turning in their homework, great. Um, communication was at a three, strong communication at grade level, but not really going above and beyond. Uh, collaboration was at a three. They're a good group member. They um, were positive to work with. Um, not like one of my top leaders, but totally on track, great student. Engineering design cycle, they did go a little bit above and beyond. Um, there were some assignments that they really crushed on the engineering design cycle. Uh, and so that earned them a three and a half. 
data analysis and forces, uh, they struggled with some of the test questions. Um, and so they demonstrated that they could do all the simple content, but not always meet the target consistently. So that earned two and a halves on those. Um, and you can see that shifted from an average of 275 originally and an average of 2.33. Um, so sometimes it ends up, I guess you could call it rounding up and sometimes it rounds down. Uh, but it's not really a rounding. It's looking at the general pattern and making a judgment based off of that. Um, momentum, they were at a three. And then energy, they were at a three and a half. When all of that gets averaged in, you had two, two and a halves, two, three and a halves. So they kind of cancel each other out. They're going above and beyond and they're not quite getting it parts. Um, but because the three and a halves were in sections that I had 14% of their grades for, and the two and a halves were in an eight and a 12, they ended up with a 3.03 .03 or a 3.04 for the summative, which is an A minus. Um, so there it is. So hopefully that is a useful tool on how you can set up your grade book and what it can look like for students. Um, let me know if you have any questions um, and I would love to run through those with you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. All right, best of luck with it. Enjoy proficiency-based grading.